I'm here. Okay, so before we dive into tonight's topic, I feel like we need to just very quickly acknowledge um, the happy Holly Doubles. Holly, Holly Doubles, how are you supposed to say that? That just came out. Um, the Double QV. Hello and thank you. And um, the Double, oh, oh, I hit the wrong button. The Double Commission on PACs. So I'm not going to make this a whole training about it, obviously, but please pay attention to the fact that it says Double QV on all first time upgrade package orders. So that's obviously your promoter packs. Um, don't assume just because somebody has been a promoter for a really long time that they've ever ordered an upgrade pack. Sometimes it happens that they haven't, they've just ordered stuff. Maybe they click promoter accidentally or whatever. So if you have some people like that, you can actually go back for your cloud, go under your team, my sponsorship to just your level ones. I'll be checking any other levels um, and just kind of peek through there. Like who, obviously if you've done a rebate double, triple or something like that with them before they, they've ordered a pack. But maybe you've got somebody who, you know, we get random stuff where people be hit promoter button and they, they don't ever actually, they order collagen gummies and that's all they've ever ordered. So those people would totally be eligible to order their first time upgrade pack that you'll get double on and that you could, uh, that or well, you'll get the double QV on and then you can also earn the extra commission. Um, but then obviously any happy customers who want to become a promoter by the end of the year or anyone you've been talking to about promoting. So um, this was just such a happy little surprise. And it was so weird because I was just, I, I got the text first, which normally I get the email. So I don't know, it threw me off. But anyway, I was like, that Lavelle, they're not letting us take any time off. They're like, no kids, no kids. It's a holiday weekend. We're throwing a promo at you, which I thought was super awesome. On top of the fact that they're giving us a bonus on our check tomorrow. Like Merry flipping Christmas people. I, I'm, it's been a great day. Level one. Um, yes. Level ones, which is really weird because it says that Tammy is asking me that and it's got my picture. You're messing with me, Sandra D. Okay. All right. So what I want to do tonight, you guys, I know that like, we're all starting to set our, like, we're starting to think ahead. Right. And I get like that. I get super excited for the new month, the new week, and especially a new year. But what I want to do is reflect over this last year. So you, if you have available to you, maybe your planner or your calendar that you've used, maybe it's on your phone. Um, if nothing else for me, I find it very helpful to have my camera roll that's on my phone. It, like, if you want to know about my life and see it in chronological order, just pull up my camera roll, scroll down to January and start going through and you'll see who I've been with, what I was doing and where I've been. Right. Um, and so sometimes that's a good uh, memory trigger. So if you get stuck on any of these questions, those are two places you can go to. And if you can't think of all your answers right here and right now, that's okay, because obviously you can play this back. Um, but it's just seven very simple questions. I will give you some of my answers or some examples. Um, some of these are hard to think about or talk about. Um, and some of them are awesome to think about and talk about. But the reason that I want to go through these is because I think it's really important to know where you've been, to know where you want to go, right? Like we all have to reflect over what we've been through in the last year um how we've handled what's happened in the last year things that we're happy about things that we would like to improve because i feel like when we set goals we just start immediately picking goals based on what we suck at do you know what i'm saying like oh my gosh my goal for this year is i've got to do this better and that better and this better res there's a lot of shit you did over the last year that you handled really well or that really brought you a lot of joy and i want to remind you of all that stuff because if you've made it like there's going to be hard times in your past year, but you've made it through, right? Because you're here. We're, we're all here together. You're alive, alert, awake, enthusiastic. That was the song we always sung in school. So, so anyway, that's what we're going to do here. So the very first question I want you to think of, what is a challenge that you've overcome in the year 2022? Now, this doesn't have to be world rocking, right? Like I know a lot of people think when they're like, oh, we're doing a recap of the year. Like it's got to be this big monumental challenge I overcame. Maybe not. Maybe you had a small habit that you wanted to establish. Maybe you um, wanted to declutter a your room or your whatever. Like maybe there's some, or maybe, maybe there was a giant challenge in your life that you had to overcome. Maybe it was a fear. Maybe you had this big mental breakthrough on some level of, you know, whatever your, your body, your mind, your soul. But I want you to think about that. I want you to think back. And, and it, you guys, to me, it's really hard to think all the way back to January but like January, February, March, like there's been 12 months behind you. What is it? Maybe there was a challenge at your job. 
I'm ready to put 22 behind me and 23 has to be gold. Yes. But you know what? Okay. So I thought about you, Shantae, when I was getting ready for this tonight. Um, and I also thought about you, Miss Sonia, because I know a lot of the stuff that we go through that sucks, we can focus on it instead of realizing it for what it is. And it's something that you've overcome or that you've worked through or that you've proven to yourself what you're capable of. Um, so I just, I feel like I just, I think this is so important. Lindsay says lawsuit finalized and you got, oh yeah, I was just going to say, and if you don't know that that's been going on for her for seven freaking years, that's a lifetime. I've been in Lavelle for just a little over seven years. She's been dealing with this for almost as long as I've used thrive and promoted it. So that's a huge, um, that's a huge thing. Okay. Are you, are you thinking again, you don't have to all share them, but I just want you to think what is a challenge you've overcome this year? Number two, what is a surprise that you dealt with? Like you never saw it coming. It happened, but you dealt with it. We've all had those things, right? We've all had something that popped up that we were not even like, it literally came out of left field. It was never anything that we ever would have thought was going to be happening in our life in that moment. And, again, and it might have even seemed earth shattering, but again, we're here, we're alive, we're having this conversation. So even as big of a surprise as it might've been, you made it. Would you say the question again? Yeah. What is a surprise that you dealt with this year that you just a thousand and ten percent, like I think of like your foot surgery. I don't know if that was really a surprise to you or not, but you probably weren't, you probably didn't wake up January one and put that on your vision board, right? <laughs> you probably weren't like, oh, I hope I have surgery this year. Yeah. Maybe, um, I mean, gosh, a surprise could be anything from maybe a, a new addition to the family, maybe um, something at work that happened for you. Um, maybe a loved one surprised you with a trip. Like there's just so many things that could happen in life that you weren't thinking about that, that could have thrown you off course, but it didn't. All right. Number three. And I love this question because when I was going through these questions, it became so clear to me. <laughs> what is something that you bought this year that you absolutely love? Could be what, like, what is something you put money into that you were like, you know what? I am so, I loved every bit of it, every minute of it, every part of it. Um, like think about the checks that you've written this year. I mean, obviously I love the fact that we have electricity, blah, blah, blah. But when I think of things I've purchased that I love for me, it's every trip I went on in 2022. Every, every plane, except for that one that came back from California to hear that I was sick on <laughs> plane tickets. Yes. So think about something, and, you know, and maybe like, um, Sandra, I think about your new phone, right? You had to, or you got a new car too. Like, so there could be things that you've purchased because more often than not, at least in my head, I will buy something and be like, oh, I didn't need that. Probably shouldn't have spent the money on that. That might not have been the best use of my money. I don't know. Should I have done that? Shouldn't I have done that? Right? Like I focus on that stuff versus I, I've not really sat down until I did this and thought about money I spent in 2022, but I am so glad I spent that money. Obviously I like to eat. I like to have a, a home. So there are, there's money I'm spending that is important, but what is something new patio and shed? Yes. My excursion I took with Keegan in Mexico. Yes. Right. And I, and I, I know, I'm pretty sure I know from all three of those answers, when you went to make that purchase, you were a little nervous, right? Lindsay says lips, Botox and trips. He, <laughs> he, yes. But so, so like Sonia, when you went to do that whole new patio in the shed, like that was a lot. And I know there were times where you were like, I, should we do it? I don't know. I just, I don't know. And Shantae, I'm sure when you were booking that excursion and you look at the dollar amount and you think, Hey, will it be safe? Are we going to make it? You know, is he going to remember this? Is he going to love this? Like you get nervous, but now you're like, yes, that was such money well spent. 
Um, and then I think of things like, you know, like to compare that versus uh, the lip gloss I saw on TikTok that I immediately ran out and bought. And it was only like $6, but I've never worn it. It's awful. Not really, not really the best use of my money, right? So this question helps you focus on what you did buy that you loved. Um, number four, and this one might be hard or it might be super easy for you guys. I, for me, it felt tricky, but what is the best podcast or book that you have listened to or read this year? That's hard for me because you guys know I listen to tons of podcasts and or books. So that was tough for me. I don't even know if I know the answer to it yet. Um, I don't know. And again, that for me is hard to think all the way back to January, February, March. Like that's a lot. Like I can think of the stuff I listened to recently, <laughs> but you know, and then some people may hear that question and be like, uh, you know what? I'm not really finished any book this year. <laughs> Or I've not listened to any of the podcasts that people talk about this year. Maybe your answer is totally different than, than that. Like it's a, your answer is your answer and it's okay, whatever direction you go with that answer, but just something to think about, like what, what did you enjoy the most? Like if I, so if I were to compare pod, like you got, you know, I talk about this all the time. Do it anyway, girl was a great, do it anyway, girl was a great book. Okay. Who wrote that? Look, we're all like staring. Michelle Cunningham. Okay, did everybody get that? Michelle Cunningham wrote a book called Do It Anyway, Girl. And it was a good, a great book, according to Shante. So the reason I think it's important to, to think about the, the podcast or the books that you've spent time with or maybe have not spent time with over the last year is because from like, some of you may have listened to a podcast about how to do something. And maybe you learned a new skill from a podcast, or maybe some of you are finding yourselves listening to podcasts that are all about um, confidence over and over and over. You know what I mean? Like you, you kind of find, it's almost like auditing your time, right? Like I was listening to all these and I loved them or I listened to all these and I got nothing out of it. So it's just a good audiobook, but I will buy it. Oh yeah. Okay. I love audiobooks. Um, okay. So number five, and this one is kind of tricky to think about, but, um, the way they worded it and I'll explain to what they meant. Cause I, I had to really think about this. What are some of your blind spots coming up next year? So in other words, what is something that, you know, you're going to be encountering in 2023 that you've never encountered before. So you're not totally sure how to navigate that. Um, the first thing I thought of was my nephew going to college. You guys, I don't even think he's going to go far away, but I like lay in bed and think about it at night. Like, that's going to be so different. That's going to be so weird. Like, will it be okay? Should I, should I maybe go up, go up there and just hang out in the parking lot for days and make sure he's okay? Like, <laughs> well, I don't know. Like, so what is something like a blind spot that you're just, you know, there's something uncertain in your life that, you know, you're going to be dealing with this year. And it can even be something fun, like maybe you're planning, maybe this is the year you're planning to finally do that kitchen renovation. That's a blind spot though, right? There's a lot of, um, a lot of stuff that can go on. Like, uh, like a blind spot for us last year that we didn't know if we would experience or not was selling our building. That, that was a huge blind spot. Like we didn't know how to navigate that. We didn't know when it was going to happen. We didn't know how it was going to happen. Um, so what is something that you you you're, you're forecasting for your future that you know for a fact you're not familiar with and again that's just kind of prepping you um here's a question that I love number six what made you the happiest this year maybe it was a person a place a thing a thought um a new habit a new responsibility um a, a hobby what made you the happiest this year? I'm going to give you a little time to think about this one. Because I think it's really important. And you maybe don't even have to pick just one thing. Maybe you're like, no, there's like three things I did this year that I was the happiest when I was doing them. Y'all, all y'all, Texas, baby Rowan, yes. And speaking on stage, yes. That fake Tammy Bataglia had a really, had a lot of stuff. <laughs>
well, y'all can be like two or three, but all y'all is more than three. So all y'all, all y'all, I got it. I knew what you meant. It's all y'all. I got it. So think about it or write it down, but like what are, and again, I had to really like, I had to go through my phone. <laughs> like I had to remember, I had to remember going to baseball games back in the spring. Like I forgot about that. Like I had to remember um, a trip that I went on back in February that I, not that I forgot that I had the trip, but I forgot it was just this past February. You know what I mean? Like things like that. So think about things that made you happy. Number seven who is a person that you could have not gotten through this past year without? Who in your life are you like, man, if they hadn't been here, I would not be standing on my own two feet right now. These are so good. My brain is tired and having to think hard. <laughs> well, that's why we record it because you can go back to it. So I'm sure most of you gut check could think of someone. Did I miss one? Uh, number one was, what is a challenge you've overcome? Number two is, what, a what is a surprise you've dealt with? Number three is, what is something that you've bought this year? Number four is, what, a, what is the best book or podcast? Number five is, what is a blind spot for next year? Number six, what has made you the happiest? And number seven, who is the person you could not have gotten through this year without? Okay, so I feel like a lot of this is self-explanatory, but just in case you missed the point of this, um, number one and number two, those questions are definitely, that is your moment to kind of look in the mirror and be like, you know what, I, I did overcome that. I did live through that. I did uh, face something daunting or I faced something um, devastating, but I am still here. And so you, you've proven to yourself that through the worst of the worst of the worst, you could still come out and be standing. And I think that is such an important thing for you to remember about yourself because during the year when you are going through hard times or even good times and you got people like barking at you and, and putting, maybe putting you down or throwing comments at you. If you can remember like, no, that comment actually means nothing to me because I've made it through X, Y, Z. And that person doesn't even really know me. They don't even know what they're talking about when they're trying to put me down, right? They have no idea what they're like. If I, So, you know, Tom and I closed our business and we sold our building. You would not believe the comments that people have made. They know nothing. They've never paid a mortgage there. They've never done any of this, right? So you could, you, I could allow myself to listen to those things or I could be like, I could think back to everything we've done and be proud right? And like feel accomplished and know that we overcame so much. And so that's your proof in the upcoming year, as you start to plan goals and you start to think, I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I can do that. You can, because look at what you already overcome. Look at the twists and turns the, the like plot twist that life threw at you. And you're like, I got it. I, it was rough. I still struggle at times, but, but I'm here and I've got it right. Like that to me is so powerful to know because we always want somebody to have our back. And luckily a lot of us have that, but we also have to have our own back. And so when you're thinking about your upcoming goals for this year and you start to, to think where you want to go, remember everything you've overcome. All those times that you thought were going to break you or that was going to be the end or it, it, you know, ooh, it was going to be over. It wasn't. So when you start thinking about your goals and they seem overwhelming, they're not. They might be hard, but they're not, they're not unattainable. Um, question number three, if you wrote down something that you bought this year that brought you joy or, or brought you peace of mind, maybe, maybe you took all your money and you gave it to the church, or maybe you took, you know, 50% of your money and you put it into investments and you're, you got a little nest egg now, or maybe you bought plane tickets. That's my favorite thing to buy. If you, tr if that was what came to your mind in these upcoming months of 2023, when you are when somebody says, you know, do you want to go on a trip? And you like, you start to struggle. No, yeah, I do want to go on the trip. Cause I know at the end of the year, I'm going to be glad I went. When your banker calls and says, Hey, we've got this new investment. I think you'd be interested in instead of you're like, Oh yeah, I'm going to do that because that's what made me happy last year. So I know that's something I love to do. That's I love seeing my money there. So, uh, Sonia, when somebody's like, I don't know, do you want to get that fountain for the backyard? And do you think we should get the canopy? 
Yes, because we love our backyard now, right? Like it's going to be easier to realize that that's money well spent. Um, the best book or podcast, this is again, just a clue for you of, of what you're spending your time on. If you are spending your time on podcasts, all about self-development and building your confidence, and you've spent an entire year listening to all of that, and you are no more confident, those are the wrong podcasts for you, right? How do you build confidence in something? You learn a new skill, you practice it, you repeat it, you become great at it. So perhaps if you're struggling with self-confidence, you need to pick a new skill and you need to realize you're a beginner and you need to learn how to do it and you need to practice it and get better. That's how you build confidence. Listening to podcasts about building confidence is not the same as actually building confidence. Or maybe you, like in my case, maybe I've listened to a lot of podcasts about different gardening things and I've learned a lot and I've gotten better from it. I like that. That makes me feel good, right? So that's something I'm going to invest my time in. So again, it's just a matter of kind of auditing your time. Like, what did I do? Did I love it or didn't I love it? And if I didn't love it or I didn't get anything from it, moving into the new year, I'm going to focus a little bit differently how I spend my time. Obviously, books and podcasts are important. But are they just filling your time and messing with your head or are you growing from them? Um, the blind spot one, it's just, again, it's so that you can um, just be better prepared for the things that are coming up. Um, like it, it kind of brings awareness to you of like, I feel like I'm good at this. I'm good at this. I'm not good at that. And I'm good at this. So when I'm looking at the, the blind spots coming ahead, I see what I need to get better at, right? I need to, for me, my example with Adam going off to college, I need to get better at communicating with him through text and being okay with one word answers because he's a boy. Um, and I also maybe need to get a little better about like what college life is going to be like so that I feel more confident. And, you know, it's like little stuff like that. Or like the, the example I gave you, if maybe this is the year you're going to be renovating your kitchen finally, and that's a big wide open spot. Well, I would start encouraging you to listen to some podcasts about home renovation and about maybe um, home equity lines of credit and things like that. Like, like start see where you're lacking and start prepping yourself for that. Like get ready for that moment. Um, when it says what made you happiest this year, you guys, that's a no brainer. If you wrote it down and it made you happy, do it again, do it again, schedule it, make it a non-negotiable for you in 2023. So going back to Sandra's example, Texas, put that shit on your calendar. When are you going? Get there as often as you possibly can. Baby Rowan, be with those grandbabies as often as you possibly can. Speaking on stage, I say go ahead and call Liz, tell her you're available for, for Thrive Palooza and that you'll be in Denver and you're ready to talk, right? Like go ahead and schedule the things that make you happy because it's going to be really easy, as you all know, for life to hit us next year and to get to the end of the year and Sandra be like, you know what, we didn't get to Texas because I meant to schedule that one trip and then this happened and then we just, we didn't get there right? It's really easy for that to happen, but you already know that you love this stuff. This is, this is your stuff, whatever it is. Like Sonia, I'm thinking of you and like riding your heart. Like, I know you love to go on those trips, like schedule that shit now. Um, and then number seven, the person who you couldn't have got through the year without call them, let them know. That's as easy as that gets. Just let them know. The thing I loved about this particular exercise is that I am very hard on myself, type A over, you know, whatever. So typically if someone said, let's reflect on 2022, I'd be like, okay, here's where I messed up and here's what I did wrong. And here's what I should have done. Like that would have been me <laughs> totally. <laughs> and I know a lot of you are like that, but these questions make you look at everything you've accomplished, everything you loved about the year the people that you love, the places that you love. And it really puts into perspective that when you start building your goals for next year, the things you wrote down today that you loved, that's, that's like your alignment. So when you start setting goals, like if I said traveling was one of the things I love the most and my goals for 2023 don't include traveling, that would be dumb, right? Um, if I said my, uh, I don't know that the, well, I guess traveling was kind of the thing I bought the most. The thing that made me happiest this year was spending time with my nephews, obviously. Um, and I didn't like purposely put them at the top of my priority list. Right. So just remember all of these things when you go specifically in the next five minutes um, to a different Zoom to start planning for your upcoming year. Think of these things and also use this as a time to be really proud of yourself for everything you've been through. There is not a single face on this screen that has not been through some shit this year. 
Like I know all y'all stories and I know everything that's been happening to you, but here you are. So I'm proud of you. I hope you had a fabulous recap of your 2022 and I have to get off here now so that the other fake Tammy Bataglia can start her other zoom. So we'll see you guys on the flip side. Bye.